thanks for the opportunity to speak. My talk is about nodes for homology and satellite nodes. Uh, in particular, I want to focus on the question of how to compute not for homology of satellite nodes effectively. And I would also like to emphasize the computation of concordance invariance derived from not for homology. And the plan is, uh, uh, I want to tell you the motivation, why I'm interested in this question. The general motivation is because both not for homology and satellite nodes are useful in the study of not concordance. And in this talk, I want to tell you a specific motivation and that has to do with a conjecture. And afterwards, I want to tell you the main result, which is a partial answer to this question. And it is a way of doing the computation of the class of satellite nodes using the immersed curve technique. Okay, and here let's look at the motivation part. And to be clear, I want to begin with reminding you what satellite nodes is. So a satellite node is uh, a knot constructed using a satellite operation, where to specify a satellite operation, we need uh, an oriented knot in a starter tallest called a pattern knot, usually denoted by P. And we would also like to parameterize the uh, boundary of the starter tallest in a standard way. Uh, here, the meridian is given by mu and the longitude noted by lambda. And then given a knot K in the three sphere called a companion knot, the pattern knot acts on the companion knot in a way that first we need to remove a neighborhood of the companion knot. And then we fill in the channel using the solid containing the pattern knot. And we do the gluing using a map H which sends the meridian of the solid tallest to the meridian of the knot K and the meridian of the solid uh, and the longitude of solid tallest lambda to the cipher longitude of the companion knot K. And after you do this gluing, uh, this uh, pattern knot P in the solid tallest now picks up the shape of the companion knot and that's denoted P of K, and that is the satellite knot. Okay, um, so one nice thing about satellite knots is that if you fix a pattern knot P, then this corresponding satellite operation uh, factorizes to the smooth knot concordance group C, which means it's a self map from C to C that sends a, that sends the concordance class of a knot K to the concordance class of P of K. And the motivation uh, of the question at the beginning for me is this conjecture due to Hedden. So Hedden says that if conjectures that if you have uh, a set of operation P and it induces a group homomorphism of the not concordance group, then it has to be one of the following three cases. The first case is a zero map. For example, it can be induced by a little unknot sitting inside of the solid tallus. And the second case is it is the identity map. For example, it can be induced by the core of the solid tallus with a standard orientation and the last one is the involution induced by orientation reversal. So it's still the core of Sertorius, but you reverse the orientation, for example. And here are some known results about Hedden's conjecture. The first one I want to mention is due to Picurito. Here, W of P denotes the winding number of P. So what she proved is suppose the setter operation P induced a group homomorphism and the winding number of P is zero, then the stable slice genus um, of P of K for any not K is zero. So here you should think about the stable slice genus as a quantity that measures how far away 
a noct is from being concordant to the n noct. And therefore, in particular, you can think about the first result here saying, uh, if P is a homomorphism, then this map P is quite close to being the uh, zero map. Although we can say for sure it is uh, at the moment. And there is a similar result for the case of writing number one, which uh, would imply that uh, the map P is quite close to the identity map. Um, and one can surely state, state the case of writing number negative one, and that would give you the involution case. Okay, and for general writing number, uh, Alison Miller gave a nice objection for such a map P to be a homomorphism in terms of the first homology of some branch covering of P. And here, Howen stated, Howen wrote down the um, complete description of this objection, but it reduces to a nice way of doing computations of a cousin garden invariant and tells you a large portion of satellite operations do not induce homomorphisms. And finally, I wanna mention the, the role of not homology play in this uh, conjecture. So there's a, a concordance invariance tau from not homology and it is a group homomorphism from the smooth not concordance group C to the integers. And for example, using this invariant tau, Helen was able to prove that the M1 cables are not group homomorphisms. So here, M1 cable is just the simplest writing number N pattern. Uh, for example, in this picture here, we have the 3 1 cable, um, and that is a string that winds around the Sartorius three times in the simplest way and tie up. Okay, and uh, Helen's proof uh, is given like this. So he was able to compute the tauing variant of the M1 cable of the trap wire, and he showed that's N. And he also computed the tauing variant of the M1 cable of the left handed trap wire, which is negative one. And since we know the tauing variant is a concordance homomorphism, suppose N. Uh, the cabling is also a group homomorphism, then these two numbers would have been opposite to each other, but they're not as long as n is greater than or equal to two. And this tells you um, M1 cable are not homomorphisms. And there are other tauing variant formers for uh, other satellite operators. So, so far we've known that uh, we have formulas for the y double and the major pattern. Uh, I'm not going to read the formulas out for you. That's not a point, but uh, in particular, but these formulas do imply the corresponding set of operations do not induce group homomorphisms. And this is pretty much the motivation. So, uh, so maybe the concrete question I have in mind is, can we do these computations for more satellite operations and we have tauing variant formulas for more satellite operations and hence we can say more about Helen's conjecture. Uh, and indeed, uh, using the uh, main theorem I'm about to tell you, we are able to generalize these computations uh, in some sense. So the starting point is uh, M1 cable, y hat double, major pattern, they are all uh, examples of two bridge length patterns. And to tell you what that is, recall that a two bridge length is a length that admits a height function with two maximum and minimum. Uh, here on the right is an example, in particular, each of the components is an unknot. So if I remove the neighborhood of the one of the component, then I'm left with a solid tallest. And the other component P now gives you a pattern uh, in the solid tallest. And this is the way you, you get a pattern knot. 
Uh, without going into the details, let me mention that tubular links and hence tubular patterns are parameterized by a pair of numbers 2p and q. And the generalization of these computational results um, is stated as following. So if P is a two bridge link pattern, then uh, I was able to give a closed formula for the time invariant of P of the trap while. And there's also a time invariant formula uh, of P acting on the left-handed trap while. Again, I'm not going to read the formulas for you. That's not the point. Uh, the point is, it is a closed formula, and you can uh, it generalizes uh, like the previous mentioned uh, set of operations. And also in terms of the uh, Hadden's conjecture, if uh, uh, the winding number of p is greater than or equal to two, then uh, and p is a two-bridge length pattern, then we know that. P does not induce uh, group homomorphism. Okay, uh, that's uh, the motivation part. And in the remaining time, I want to tell you uh, what is the uh, what is the main theorem. And to be clear, I want to briefly mention uh, what Higa homology and not homology is. So Higa homology is an invariant for close-oriented free manifolds. There are many versions of it, and in its simplest version, denoted by C of hat of y, this is a freely finitely generated graded chain complex over F. And F is the two-element field. And later on, using um, Higa homology, uh, Oswald Sabo and independently Rasmussen was able to define notch flow homology. So again, there are several versions of it. And in its simplest version, uh, it associated to a not K, a C futured freely finitely generated greater chain complex over F, uh, denoted by C of K hat. So compared to not uh, compared to Higa homology, uh, the new thing is the Z futuration. And by Z filtration, I mean a family of subcomplexes indexed by the integers such that uh, it is increasing, meaning FD is contained in FD plus one. And then for large enough subindex n, Fn equals to the whole chain complex. And for small enough subcomplex, the sub, uh, uh, for small enough subindex, the subcomplex is zero. The future chain homotopy type of CFK hat is an invariant of uh, the nut. Therefore, if we look at the associated graded object and we take homology, that is also an invariant of the nut that is denoted by uh, HFK hat and that is not homology. FK, and it decomposes according to the filtration degree. And finally, I want to mention that the numerical invariant tau is defined to be the minimum filtration degree D such that the homology group of FD suggests onto the homology group of the whole chain complex. So that is about not for homology. And then I want to recall immersed curve. So immersed curves tennis greatly uh, simplifies the computation. In uh, say concretely, uh, for an oriented manifold with torus boundary, Hansman, Rasmussen, Watson uh, associated to it a immersed curve gamma m, and that is a collection of curves gamma i such that uh, each gamma i is an immersed circle in the boundary of the three manifold minus the base point w. So in its full generality, these uh, immersed circles also come to local systems. But in this talk for simplicity, 
we are not going to uh, emphasize their role and we will pretend they do not exist. And a theorem um, says up to regular homotopy, D squared gamma M is an invariant of M. And uh, And the relation to here for homage is that suppose I have um, a close oriented free manifold Y obtained by gluing M1 and M2, where both M1 and M2 are manifolds with torus boundary, then the Higa flow homology, the Higa flow chain complex of Y can be obtained by DC merge curves. So more concretely uh, on the boundary of M1, we have this immersed curve gamma M1. And since uh, this is also the boundary of M2, we have the immersed curve gamma M2. And the theorem is saying the Higa flow chain complex of Y is the Lagrangian flow chain complex of these curves on the marked torus. So more specifically, the generators of this chain complex is given by the intersection point of gamma M1 and gamma M2, and the differential of the chain complex counts bygones in the complement of W. So in this figure here, we have a bygone connecting X to Y. Therefore, in the differential of X, Y appears as a term. Okay, uh, with these preparations, we are now able to state the main theorem. So the main theorem restricts to a class of patterns um, that admits genus one double point to the Hager diagram. So in general, Hager uh, such a diagram looks like this. Uh, and here we would identify the red edges as indicated. Therefore, we actually have a punctured torus and on this puncture torus, we have two base points W and C and an embedded circle denoted beta P. So a concrete example is this one here. It's uh, now we have an actual beta curve instead of a schematic one. And the point about such diagram is that uh, it encodes uh, the pattern knot. So in this concrete example here, the diagram on the left encodes the pattern knot on the right. And the general procedure to see that is we first connect Z to W using an arc that is in the complement of the green curve. And then we connect them uh, by another arc in the complement of the red curve that goes under the previous arc. Uh, now we can see the blue knot uh, on this diagram gives the brew now in this in this solid torus. Okay, so uh, for such pattern, the knot for homology of P of K can be computed similarly. So recall that uh, the set line of P of K is obtained by gluing the complement of the uh, companion knot and the saratolus containing the pattern knot. So from the companion knot, we have a, uh, the companion knot complement. We have an immersed curve on the on the boundary of this manifold. That's alpha of k here in this diagram, and then we just stack this curve onto the uh, bordered Hega diagram of this guy. And now we have these two curves and two base points on the torus. And the theorem is saying, is saying the not for a chain complex of P of K can be computed as the uh, future the Lagrangian for a chain complex of this guy on the right here. And just a few words about the future Lagrangian for a chain complex. So as a chain complex, it's just defined as in the previous case. And the new things here is the fluctuation. And in this case, the fluctuation is given by a grading called the Alexander grading. 
And this grading takes the form of a function from the generators to the integers. And with this grading, the subcomplexes given a filtration FD is uh, defined to be the element uh, with LSNR grading less than or equal to D. And then given two intersection points X and Y, the grading difference between them is defined to be uh, NZ phi minus NW of phi, where phi is a disk connecting X to Y and NZ phi just denotes the number of times phi crosses D and likewise for NW of phi. Okay, that is the main theorem. And in the remaining time, uh, I want to conclude the talk using an example, just to illustrate how one can use this theorem to do computations. So the example is the free run cable of the trap by knot. And by stacking the border Hager diagrams together with the inverse curve diagram, we have uh, the pairing diagram. Of course, from the pairing diagram, we can uh, write out a chain complex using the definitions. But um, we don't need to do that. For example, if we want to compute the not for a module of P of K, then we can lift this diagram to the universe cover of the Taurus. And on there we have this pair of curves, green and red. And here I have shaded some bygones uh, in blue. And these are the bygones representing the differential in the associated graded object. So in order to compute a homology, all we need to do is to eliminate these bygones using isotopy. And after we do that, uh, we can get a diagram with the minimum number of intersection point. And in this diagram, uh, each intersection point now gives you an element in the uh, not for homology groups. And that finishes the computation of this guy. And we can also put on the Arizona grading. Uh, so we know that we can determine the relative grading using the formula we mentioned above. And in here, we can put down an absolute grading by requiring the Arizona grading to be symmetric. In particular, this guy in the middle here has Arizona grading zero. And the last thing I wanna tell you is how we can compute tau invariant. The way to compute tau invariant uh, is that we can uh, eliminate bygones containing only the Z base point. But uh, in each time we wanna do it, we wanna eliminate the bygone with minimal as an aggregate difference. And we keep doing that in the end, we will have only one intersection point left. So for example, in here I've shaded uh, three bygones, they all have Alexander grading difference one and their minimum uh, among the rest. The, therefore I can eliminate them using uh, isotopy. And after that, I get this curve. I still have some bygones here. Uh, like here are two bygones uh, and I can eliminate them. And after that, I get this curve. And there's one more bygone and I eliminate them. Now I get this green curve and the red curve only intersects at one point. And this intersection point has Arizona grading three corresponding to this guy here. And the tau invariant is just the Arizona grading of this guy, which is three. And that concludes uh, the computation. So that's pretty much uh, what I have to say. So in summary, uh, this way to compute not for a module of satellite knot using uh, manipulations of curves and tallest. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the talk and hope in the future, if you ever need to do such computation, this theorem can be uh, of some help. Thank you.